Trump writing on True Social Sunday night that he will not be participating. His GOP challengers weighing in over the weekend. Listen to this. Well, I expect it to be even more important without Donald Trump on the stage because this is the first time voters are going to be able to contrast the candidates and their positions. I'm actually still hoping he shows up. I think every one of us that have qualified for that debate stage ought to be on the stage, be willing to square off, uh, answer the tough questions, and also draw a, a bright line. Donald Trump is afraid to go on the debate stage and answer for being a proven loser. I think Donald Trump is free to make whatever decision is, he feels is right for him for the first couple of debates. A new Emerson College poll finding Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy are tied for second among GOP primary voters at 10 percent each, while Trump is well in the lead at 56 percent. Joining me now, Fox News political analyst Juan Williams and also joining me, Fox News political analyst Gianna Caldwell. Gentlemen, good morning. Gianna, you, of course, are the author of the book Taken for Granted. But Juan, I'm going to start with you on all of this. Uh, here we go this week, Juan. What do you think we are going to see on that debate stage come Wednesday night? Well, good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Giannis. I, I think this is the good fight morning. to be the alternative to Trump. Uh, clearly, Donald Trump has a sizable lead uh, in all the polls, including uh, polls in Iowa, uh, where all the candidates have been campaigning so heavily. But right now, you do see that there are some of that base, some of the Trump base that could be peeled away. So, so far in this campaign, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has been the principal alternative. And it looked like, you know, the donors were right behind him. He raised a record amount of money. But in the last few weeks, we've seen him lose staff. He's had to fire staff. He's gone down in the polls, not up. Uh, and he's had some really embarrassing moments. So. Who is going to be the alternative to Donald Trump? I think you're going to see lots of competition, people trying to break out, even as DeSantis tries to recover. Well, I'm glad that you brought up Ron DeSantis, because Gianno, Andy Kessler writes yeah. uh, in the Wall Street Journal on the opinion page, he says, uh, here's 15 ways to win the primary, presidential primary. He's talking to the Republicans, and when it comes to DeSantis, he goes, you know what, get back to your get out of my life uh, policy uh, that you policies, excuse me, that you enacted as the governor of Florida. You ended lockdowns, mask mandates, school closings, yeah. DEI requirements. Get back to that. Stop bashing Disney. Yeah. You know, part of the reason I moved to Miami, Florida in May 2020 from LA was because of Ron DeSantis' leadership. And I got to tell you, he's uh, sh shockingly has been the biggest appointment of the disappointment of this primary thus far. Trump supporters are listless vessels. Like, what does that even mean? It sounds very insulting. Definitely a basket of deplorables moment. I don't think that, especially a lot of conservatives thought that Ron DeSantis would be flatlining like this. He was at 31 percent in March, went to 20 some percent, I guess, in June. Now you're at 10 percent battling with a, a guy who has no political experience whatsoever, who happens to be a billionaire, which I think some people don't actually know. Uh, as well, but who has a fresh vision for America. Vivek has now ascertained uh, a lot of support when po with the postgraduate group of the Republican Party and also young folks, which is, uh, he took away a lot of Ron DeSantis' support. So Ron yeah. is in a, in a pivotal place. You can, you know, come into the debate and hopefully strike a chord, but he's in a very difficult position right now especially with the latest comments that have come out about it. Yeah, and again, all of this leads into this is the primary, but let's not forget the general. And, you know, a lot of Republicans are saying, let's focus on the general. How do we win? Uh, Maria did ask RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel uh, about the party's poll watching efforts yesterday morning. Listen to this one. And ordinary people want to know if the RNC is going to protect them. Are you going to spend energy and time and money on that? It, absolutely. We, we have lawyers on the ground. We've already been there. And this is part of our Protect the Vote initiative as well, is we're going to have mm -hmm. lawyers in every single precinct. We're going to have lawyers um, a, a, a involved in every state. We had 19 councils last cycle. We're going to expand that. And we're going to have poll watchers and poll workers. But that is part of protecting the election. And we also have to protect people, make sure that they're not going to be penalized for being part of the political system. One, the Democrats are going to, I mean, they're going to have to respond to this. Your response. 
Well, I think that what you're going to see is that Democrats are waiting, actually, on the debate stage to see uh, which of the Republicans running for the nomination say, hey, the 2020 election was stolen from President Trump. Who says that and who doesn't say it? Who says, no, it wasn't stolen and we need to get by that whole set of issues and move on to attacking President Biden? Uh, on the economy, on Afghanistan, wherever, but move on to Biden, move away from the past. I think, you know, DeSantis has been in competition with former President Trump for the Trump lane and for the arguments over the past and, and a lot of cultural war issues. But if you think of Ron Vivak Raswamy, you think of Heard, uh, you think of Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, a lot of those candidates are tilting towards the future, but they refuse to deal with the difficulty of the past and the fact that so much of the Trump base is still locked in to what happened in 2020. Well, even Gianna with the indictments, you know, Doug Burgum was on uh, one of the other Sunday shows yesterday and, and he was asked repeatedly about the indictments of Trump, but he just didn't want to go there, basically saying, well, you know, I don't have the name recognition and, and maybe they're, they don't want to address I guess the elephant in the room, which is Donald Trump on, on many levels, Gianna. So how do you handle that on Wednesday? Exactly right. They don't want to live in a shadow. And I understand that, but that is the ball game. You do have a lot of conservatives who are fired up and passionate around what they believe to be uh, unequal application of justice when it comes to Donald Trump. They've seen what happened with Joe Biden with the, the classified documents. This is a concern for them, and they want to know where these particular candidates stand. I don't think anybody on that stage will say, like, oh, yeah, the election was stolen. I don't think anyone would say that. Uh, but you just never know what could happen in these kind of debates. And thinking about the electability argument, who's going to be best up against Joe Biden, that candidate was Ron DeSantis. But if we think back to what just recently happened in the Florida state curriculum with uh, the one line about slavery and, and somehow making it, taking some positives out of slavery, that damaged his ability to really perform when it comes to black voters in a general election. Because at that point, Democrats can say, oh, yeah, this is just a candidate that wants to take us back to slavery. And that right there is a kill shot. Uh, Ron DeSantis could have said, I don't know how that got there. We're, you know, we're, we fixed it. We're moved on. And it could have been a non-story. But now there's much more to talk about when it comes to Disney and any other issues that can impact his standing um, before independence in a general election. Yeah. And Juan, you brought that up at the top of the segment. Juan, last word. Well, you know, I, I think what Gianna said is really important about electability. That had been Ron DeSantis's claim. You know, I think that's why a lot of Republican donors were behind him, because they thought, you know, with all the baggage, the static around Trump, you're looking for somebody who can go out there and make the case 